everybody. Happy New Year. I've got another one for you today. Someone just sent me this. They said, hey, Wes, have you ever done something like this? I've got two arrays with people's names in it. And then uh, alongside their names, you have different properties that need to be added up. And those properties could be literally anything. I need to be able to uh, put them all into one array and merge them and count each of the properties on them. How do I do that? So uh, uh, this is a perfect use case for reduce. And this is exactly the kind of question that gets asked in an interview. So I thought, let's flip on the recorder and see what we've got going on here. All I have here is a function called add it up. And I am running Node.js in my terminal here with the new dash dash watch. Um, and it will simply just rerun this every single time that we have. And I'm just going to console.table the result. OK, it works. So first thing is I need to be able to collect one, two, a million arrays and merge them into one. Uh, so instead of telling the person, OK, you pass us an array of arrays, we can simply just say, uh, this added up could take array one, array two. You could you could give it as many arguments as you want, um, and we can collect them all with a rest uh, parameter, which is dot dot dot. Uh, we'll just call it data, uh, and what that will do is it will take every single argument and combine it into an array, uh, and then we'll go right here. We'll say const. What should we call that? Um, maybe we'll call this arrays of data. And we'll here we'll say data is equal to uh, arrays of data dot flat and flat will bring it into one array and give that a save um, undefined oh because we need to return the data from here there we go so uh, right away we've got one array with all of the per people's names as well as any of the different properties that they have um, now what we need to do is to create a new array or sorry a new object where the person's name is the key or the property. Um, and then each of the properties inside of that are either created when they, we hit it for the first time or incremented by however many the next time is. So that's what we do with array.reduce. Uh, so I usually I would just chain these, but it gets a little bit hard for debugging. So we'll make a new value here called tally. And we'll just return the tally. So tally is equal to data.reduce. Now a reduce takes two arguments. First, the reducing function. And second, what we are going to start with. So in our case, we're just going to start with an empty object. If you knew ahead of time what your keys would be, you could do something like this. Like you could say the first key is Jim Bob, and he's going to start with a goals that is zero and assists that is zero. But we don't, that's annoying, right? The, the, we don't know ahead of time what the possible things are. So we're not going to do that. We're simply just going to start it with an empty object here. And then inside of this function, we take two things. I always forget the order of the uh, array. Previous value, current value, current index. Okay, so the previous value would be the tally array and the so that that's every single time that we run a reduce we are looping over each of these and it's going to give us the sort of our tally that we're running in our case it's going to be that uh, and then the second one is going to be the person uh, we're, we'll call that person or maybe player because this is um, if you were making this a generic function you probably would just call this item Maybe let's do that because we don't want to hard code that this is a player. What if it's used on a restaurant, you know? So a tally array and item. So in here, we're just going to say console.log uh, working on uh, tally array dot name. And then we will simply return just hi. Okay, working on undefined. Okay. Uh, oh, no, it's item. Working on Joe Brown, Jim Bob, Harry Styles, Craig Mack. Okay, good, good, good. Um, right here we'll do is we will say uh, first check if this person is new. So we'll say uh, the tally array square bracket. Uh, we are going to use the person's name as a key. Um, and let's just use a straight up string right now. And then I'll show you a trick if, the, if there's a possibility that their name is not 
uh, maybe has a, an accented character in it or something like that. We don't want to do it. So we'll say tally array square bracket item dot name is equal to an empty object. And we'll simply return the tally array. Okay, so now we have uh, only four different players here because it has um, created it for that. Then we say the tally array of item name is equal to the same thing or an empty object. And what that will do is it will say um, the person's object is equal to the person's object if it exists. And if it does not exist, we set it to an empty object. Okay, there we go. We're in good shape. Um, it, I can also take you one step further and just say like um, he ho. You can see that the, we added a he ho column in there. Um, now, there could be a potential issue with this uh, because what if somebody's like, let's let's go and add another one. Uh, we'll call that uh, Wes. We'll put a accented character in there, boss. And oh, it can you use an accented character? As a key? Oh, I guess you can. What about an emoji? I guess if it's in a in a quote, you can. Okay, I was going to tell you that that would break, but it didn't break. What I was going to say is that if there was an issue with the names being keys in the object, you could do a number of different things. You could like run it through a stringify or an ID function or something like that. Um, what you would... No, what we do in JavaScript sometimes is we use a symbol. A, sy a symbol is a unique identifier, and you can pass it literally anything. You pass it an array, you pass it an object, you pass it a number. In our case, we could create a symbol based on their name, and that will be a unique identifier. And that will also um, get around the fact that maybe somebody has the same name, and you, you could have a unique one for that. We don't need to get into that right now, though. All right, so we have the tally array here. Um, then we need to loop over each of their properties and um, mm -hmm, and add them up. So we basically, we need an array of these things, everything that is not their name. Um, and here I'll show you another cool trick. In order to get an object of values without something, we can do this. We could say const curly brackets, we can destructure the name property out of there. So let's say name is equal to item. And then we don't need to say item.name. We can simply just say name. Now what's left is going to be everything else. It, what's left is going to be, ready for this, the rest. So we can use a rest param dot, dot, dot. Uh, and we'll just say, uh, what should we call this? Um, points, maybe. And that now will give us uh, a, here, watch this, console.log points. And maybe actually up here, we could say console.log working on, we'll put the person's name in there. And now we see as we loop over each one, working on Joe Brown, working on Jim Bob, working on Harry Styles, working on Craig Mack, and it shows you all the actual values. So what we can do next here is now we want to loop over those points. So say object dot um, entries. We want to take the points. And what that will give us is an array of assists and four points and five P, P, G and zero. So object dot entries. And we will loop over each of those by saying for each. Um, and we have we can destructure that into the key and the value and we'll say if the tally array of name has that key then tally array name of key plus val otherwise the tally array name of key is equal to value okay we got that going here uh let's do a quick little check 
to see. Uh, let's grab Craig Mack. Five goals here and three goals there. So she ha he should have eight, only five. Something's something's not working. Oh, there it is. Um, I am simply just adding the value, but not reassigning it. So the tally array is equal to itself plus the new amount. So we'll put a little comment here. Already exists. So we increment the value by the next line. And then here is brand new. Set it to that value. There we go. Now Craig Mack has eight. And I should see if I add a just a totally different one. Let's say if I add a dog value here where the let's add a bones of a million bones. You'll see that that is now added in it. Pretty flexible. So let's take a quick look at this. Any any way we could improve it. Um, I would love to see in the comments how you would do it. Usually somebody will come around with a one-liner of really succinct nested reduces, which is really cool. Um, but I'm a big fan. Maybe this for each could be also do be done as a nested, but I'm okay with pretty much reaching out to the tally array that lives in the scope of um, of this function and updating it because that's that's generally how you do a reduce. Cool little project. Leave your solutions down in the comments. I'll post the actual code in the comment on YouTube.